Hello everybody, we'll start with Java programming language. So Java is a high level programming language. First, we'll start with the features of Java. So the first point is, it is a simple programming language. So what does this mean? This means that the Java is easy to learn and understand. Okay. Next is, object oriented so java is object oriented so what does this line mean it means that everything in java is written inside the classes we'll study object oriented programming in detail later but for now just understand that java is an object oriented programming language next is platform independent so this means that java is not dependent on the platform so what is a platform platform is a combination of operating system as well as the architecture for example windows plus intel is one platform Win linux plus intel is another platform windows plus amd is yet another platform so on different platforms the same code can run that's why java is called as platform independent so what happened before java is we wrote a c c++ code then when we compiled the code it translated into machine language so now for different platforms we need a different compiler as opposed to java whenever we compile the java code it is a byte code so this byte code is an intermediate representation and we can run it on different platforms so we just need the jvm installed in that platform and we can run the code the next feature is architecture neutral so what is the meaning of architecture neutral that it is not dependent on the architecture so in c c++ the size of data types is different on different architectures for example if i take a 32 bit architecture the size of int is 2 bytes if i take a 64 bit architecture the size of int data type is 4 bytes as opposed to java size of data type is fixed for different architectures even if i use a 32 bit architecture or i use a 64 bit architecture the size of data type is fixed so the size of int remains 4 byte in both the architectures next is portable so what is the meaning of portable portable means it can be taken from one machine to another so as we have seen that byte code can run on different machines so what i can do is i can take the byte code and take it on different machine so the code will also run there that's why java applications are also called as vora this means write once run anywhere so i need to write a java application once and i can run it on multiple platforms so the next feature is secure java is a secure programming language so why it is secure there are two main reasons for this first is in java we do not have pointers so we do not have direct access to memory locations that's why java is a secure language secondly the java code runs inside the virtual machine instead of directly running on the machine this makes java secure programming language next feature is robust so robust means that it can handle error prone situations in java there is a feature for garbage collections we can handle exceptions in java so this makes java a robust programming language the next feature is java is compiled as well as interpreted language So what is the difference between compiler and interpreter? When I have to convert a code from high level programming language to a machine language, I can either use a compiler or an interpreter. Compiler directly converts the full source code to a machine code, whereas interpreter converts it line by line. So in Java, when I first use a compiler to convert a high level code to a byte code, then in JVM, it is executed line by line. So that's why it is compiled as well as interpreted language. Now let us see all the steps involved in execution of the Java code. So initially we have a source code. In the first step we are giving it to the compiler. The compiler is Java C compiler which converts the source code to byte code. This byte code is an intermediate representation. The byte code is further given to Java virtual machine which has Java interpreter which interprets the bytecode to the final output 
it also has a jit compiler the jit compiler is just in time compiler it is used for optimizing the bytecode to the machine code and finally we have the machine code so next we will see some important terms the first one is jvm so the full form of jvm is java virtual machine so what does this java virtual machine means it is a virtual machine that is used to run java codes next we have is jre this is java runtime environment so it is a software package that contains jvm the virtual machine as well as the class libraries the next is jdk so this is java development kit so this is a complete kit that is used for running the java codes so it contains jre as well as other development tools like compilers debuggers etc so jre contains jvm so jre is superset of jvm and jdk contains jre so jdk is superset of jre so next we will see the installation part so there are two ways of running a java code either you can write the code in a notepad file and you can download java on your systems and execute it from command line second is you can download an ide right so first we will see the notepad method so what you can do is here you have to download jdk on your systems so first you'll have to search for jdk download on google you can find this oracle link here you can download the jdk corresponding to the operating system you have in your systems once this is successfully installed you need to set the path in the environment variables so we need to go to the bin folder just copy its path and paste it in the environment variables path variable So once this is set, you can write the code on the notepad and execute it from the terminal. The second method is you can use an ID. You can use either ID like Visual Studio or NetBeans, anything. So let's take an example of Visual Studio. You can download Visual Studio from the internet. You can choose the operating system. Once this is installed, inside this you can directly download the extension pack for Java by Microsoft. It will automatically download the JDK. That is the complete kit required for running a Java program. So now let us see an example of a basic code. So now as we have seen everything in Java has to be inside a class. So first we will make a class. Let us say class example. Now uh, this parenthesis indicates the start and end of a block. So everything that is written inside these parentheses that is inside the class example. So now syntax of main function is public static void main. Then we have string args. Now public it is an access modifier. So what is the meaning of public? It means that the code can be accessed from anywhere. So now this main function has to be called by JVM. So JVM is not present inside the class. It has to be called from outside the class. That's why we make the main function as public. Next is static. So we'll study static in detail later, but just for giving you a little overview, static is used to call a function without making the object of the class. So now since the main function has to be called by JVM, JVM does not need to make an object of this class and then call the main function. That's why we always make main function as static. Next is void. Void is the return type. So whenever this function completes its execution, it doesn't return anything. That means the return type is void. Then main is the name of this function. String args are command line arguments. We will see them in detail later. Then we have a block. Curly brackets a start indicates the start of block and the end indicates the end of block. So everything inside this is inside the main function. In the main function it is written system.out.print. So system is the name of the class. 
Out is an object made inside the system class. It's an object of print stream that is used for printing something on the screen. Then print, it is a function used for printing something on the screen. So everything written inside the double quotes gets printed on the screen. So now if I want to give comments in this function, there are two types of comment. One is single line comment, next is multi-line comment. So for giving a single line comment, I have to use double forward slash. And for giving multi-line comments, it starts with slash asterisk sign and ends with asterisk slash sign. So all these comments are ignored by the compiler while compiling this code. So now the name of the class is examples. This will be saved as example.java. Whichever class contains the main function, you have to save the file as that class name.java. So here main function is an example class. So the name of the file will be example.java. So now for compiling it, first uh, go to the folder where this code is saved. For compiling, we'll use the command java c example.java. So java c is name of the compiler that is used for compiling java code example.java is the name of the file so when i compile this code byte code is created so byte code has an extension dot class so now we can see in the folder it is saved as example dot class so this is the intermediate representation it is not exactly machine code it is not the java code it is an intermediate representation now we can run this code with the command java example so for running we write java and then we write the name of the byte so it is example. So when I run this, the output is displayed, right? Clear? So now if I want to run the same code on Visual Studio, you can just copy this code. So in the Visual Studio, either you can give the two commands first for compiling and running here itself, or the other way is you can directly run it using this button. So now we'll start with the MCQs. So the first question is, Java main method is invoked by. So as we've already studied, the Java virtual machine or the JVM invokes the main method at the beginning of the code. Moving on to the next question, which component is used to compile, debug and execute the Java program? So as we know that JDK or the Java development kit has the compiler, debugger and all the other development tools necessary to run the Java code. That is why our answer would be JDK. Which component is used to convert a Java program to bytecode. As we saw, while executing our program on the command line, the command we gave was Java C space file name. So Java C basically is the Java compiler that converts our file to the bytecode. So our answer would be compiler. Which component is responsible to optimize bytecode to machine code? So JIT or just-in-time compiler is a component that is inside the JVM and that is responsible for the optimization work. Which of the following options lead to the portability and security of Java? For portability, a bytecode is created and this bytecode runs on the JVM or the Java Virtual Machine. If a computer has a JVM, it can run a bytecode created on any other machine. Bytecode being run on JVM results in portability. For security, JVM runs the entire code in, inside it. The code does not interact with the operating system directly and thus it also provides security which of the following is not a java feature so as we know that java removed the use of pointers to provide security so pointers which of these cannot be used as a variable name in java we know that keywords are reserved words which have a special meaning to the compiler so we cannot name our variables as these keywords so answer is keywords what is the extension of Java code file? So while saving our code, we saved our file as class name .java. So the extension that we used was .java. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, do like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon below.